Hey everybody, welcome back guys. We're gonna be talking about crossbows again and sighting in a crossbow. And what I'm gonna show you guys is how you can effectively sight your crossbow in at least at that first yardage or like the first you know, dot in your reticle. How you can do that with just a single shot. So stay tuned. All right, so the whole purpose behind this video is I actually, I need to recite this Vital X in and I've actually made mention of this sight in tactic before in the Vital X review and the Diesel X review, and I never really went into much detail with it. So I've got to sight this in because I put a different optic on and we're gonna be shooting some different arrows than what I originally did. So, real quick, just because some of you guys might be interested, let's talk setup. So, on the Vital X, what I did is I put the Killer Instinct Lumix 4x32 on here. So, this is a fixed reticle optic, it's not a speed ring style optic. And the reason I didn't go with the speed ring one, guys, don't get me wrong. The speed rings are my favorite. Love the Lumix speed ring. I absolutely love the MaxView MV36, but this crossbow right here is going to be kind of a loner crossbow. This is one I want some people who maybe have never hunted before or haven't ever bow hunted, crossbow hunted before. I want this to be a bow that I can hand to someone and it'd be very easy for them to use. And what I don't want to have happen, even though there's locking rings on the speed ring style optics, I don't want anybody in the heat of the moment to want to try to turn this and adjust magnification to get a better sight picture. And honestly, I really like the Lumix IRE, um, the reticle setup. It's a, it's a very easy, very clear sight picture. Illuminates really well, it's super easy to get on target fast. So I just thought that this would be good for what I intend this Vital X to be used for. We're gonna pair that with my favorite arrow setup. This is the one you've seen me shoot a lot, the Sirius Phoenix fletched with Q2i Fusion X2 three inch veins at a one degree offset, knock tuned, uh, 110 grain insert, 150 grain point. The whole setup, at least with this knock in it, just this white one, that's 490 grains. If I add a lighted knock, it's right at 500. So that's kind of my bread and butter setup. So what we're gonna do, haven't shot this particular arrow with this particular optic at all. We're gonna shoot it first and I'm gonna explain the basically single arrow sight in process. All right, you guys, before I touch off that first shot, I mean, really installing a brand new optic, shooting a brand new arrow, um, but more on the optic side, you really don't know where this is gonna hit. So the first thing I like to do just to make sure I'm on my bag is just eyeball it, just line up my, uh, my reticle with the bullseye and just kind of eyeball and make sure that that arrow is gonna hit the target. I'm gonna start at 20 yards because that just is kind of a safe distance. And it's a, it's a distance that a lot of people might set they're the first dot or the first line in their reticle up at. So we've got a pretty good, I think we should be on the bag on this first shot. So let's go ahead and just touch it off. All right, let's check it out. So my eyeballing must not have been that good. It, it seemed pretty good, but what you guys are gonna see, it's very low. It's not bad left and right. It's just really low. So that's where we hit. So that's where we're gonna adjust from. I don't exactly know how low that is. It's probably, gosh, 10 inches or so low, maybe a foot, um, but I would say probably 10 inches. 10 inches low and we're pretty good left to right, maybe just a smidge to the right. All right, so we gotta adjust from that first shot. We are low and we're a little bit to the right. So on this particular optic, and every optic as far as what each click is going to do, like how much it's gonna move, it can vary a little bit. On this particular one though, it is each click moves your reticle or your point of impact a half an inch at 100 yards. Now we're shooting at 20 yards and I don't wanna to try to calculate or find a conversion table or any of that stuff to figure out how many clicks I need to move it probably be off a little bit and then have to shoot more arrows at 20 yards. What we're gonna do is we are going to set the reticle on the bullseye, just like we did on our first shot. And then we are gonna watch and we are gonna move the reticle down exactly where that first arrow hit. And then our second arrow, we're gonna shoot basically just a confirmation arrow, should be basically right in the bullseye. 
Now, to do that, there's a couple things you guys gotta understand. And I'm gonna try to not be too long-winded explaining it. The first thing, you're gonna need something to lock your crossbow in place. Bog death grip, something you can use. It is not the most ideal thing because it is a tripod. It, it, it's not fully supported, right? Like this isn't fully supported. You can get things pretty tight and this works for me, but it is not the best option. Something like a lead sled. It's a much better option because you can really lock your crossbow down in a particular position. You can make some finite adjustments with, um, you know, like where your forend rests, where your buttstock rests, all that kind of stuff. You can make much better adjustments with something like a lead sled. If you don't have a bog death grip or a lead sled, you can try to hold your crossbow basically in as tight of a position as you can with like shot bags, pillows, cushions, I don't know, stuff like that and have a friend basically adjust your reticle for you and you're watching it go to where your first arrow went. Obviously, the, the more rigid you can hold this thing, the, the better this system is going to work. Um, and it might not be perfect, but it should help you, regardless of what you use, get sighted in much faster. And honestly, you can do it with one shot and all those methods, it's, it's just harder depending on what you have to lock your crossbow in place, okay? So, also understanding a particular optic and, and how the reticle actually moves is important. So what you wanna do, it doesn't matter if you're doing this method or just a standard sighting method, is you want to move your reticle, your optic, to where you want your arrow to go. So we are low and we are right. So we want to adjust our elevation turret, the top one. We want to spin it where the arrow says up. We want to move our point of impact up. And then we want to move our point of impact left. So on the windage turret, we're going to twist it where the arrow says left, okay? What is physically happening inside of the optic, the reticle itself, it's moving in the opposite direction. So when we twist it in the up direction on the elevation turret, the reticle is actually moving down. And that makes sense. If you just sit here and you think about it, if you had a point of aim, uh, if you moved your reticle dot like to your grip, right? You're gonna be raising your crossbow up to the target. It's gonna move your point of impact up. Same thing, we wanna move our point of impact just a little bit to the left. If I put my right cam on the target, I'm moving my crossbow to the left. So it makes sense. The, the physical reticle inside of your optic is moving opposite of what the arrows say. So the easiest way, at least for me, to conceptually do all this is I'm gonna put my reticle right on the bullseye again. I'm going to twist the elevation turret in the up position and I'm gonna lock everything down and I'm gonna watch it until it goes low enough to where it's in line with my first shot. And then I'm just gonna do probably a couple adjustments on the windage turret and I'm gonna move it to the left and I'm gonna watch the reticle physically move to the right until it's exactly at the point of impact of my first shot. And then we'll fire a basically just a confirmation shot. I mean, in reality, you're making all your adjustments based off of one shot. That's where this is a one shot sight in, but we're gonna shoot a second one just to make sure those adjustments get us right where we want to be on our second shot. Guys, I've got the reticle set up right on the bullseye of the target, right where we were aiming before. So I'm gonna do my best now not to touch too much stuff or put too much pressure on my uh, optics, on the turrets, while I'm making these adjustments. But basically, we're gonna spin it until we watch that uh, reticle drop. We're gonna spin it in the up position, watch it drop down to our point of impact on the first shot, and then we're gonna tweak it just a little bit to the left. So we're gonna spin it to the left and watch that thing physically move to the right over to our first shot there. So the up is this way. You can just sit there and you can spin it and you can just watch it move. And you just gotta be really careful with something like a bog, just so you're not putting too much pressure on it and actually moving the crossbow. So this is a lot of clicks at 20 yards moving something, you know, 10 to 12 inches, you would be trying to calculate a whole bunch of clicks. All right, so I basically got it now lined up uh, vertically. So now we're gonna move it over just a little bit. I need to move it to the left. So I need to go this way. 
or I want my arrow to hit further to the left. I'm watching my reticle physically move to the right. So now I am right on my, uh, my original point of impact. So we're gonna shoot a second shot now. We'll see if that works. And obviously you guys, like I was saying, it, it might not be perfect. You might move the crossbow just a little bit. So if it's not like a tiny, you know, perfect bullseye, that's okay. If we're, if we're somewhere in that like kind of first set of rings, you know, like a baseball right now as an initial sight in off of one shot, totally fine with that. So let's go ahead, let's take another shot and see where we get. You guys will like this. You guys will like this one right here. So I must have had everything locked in pretty darn well because on our second shot, our verification shot to make sure our adjustments were true. Check that out. That is exactly what you should be striving for when you're making these type of optic adjustments, moving your reticle based off of one shot. So that blue tape right there, that was our first shot. And just looking through, having everything locked down on my bug, that is our second shot. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna move my target back to 30 yards. I'm gonna see kind of where my point of impact is uh, at 30 yards. Hopefully it's right in the bullseye as well. Because typically I like to set the top dot of my reticle from zero to 30, but we're just gonna shoot it. We're gonna see what it does. Um, and then we're gonna make some fine tune adjustments from there. This is where that initial sight and, you know, only having to shoot one arrow makes this, you know, stretching it out, setting up your reticle, all that stuff a lot faster because all of these adjustments from here on out should be fairly minor. So let's shoot this at 30 yards using the same top dot, see where we get. All right, you guys, we'll walk up to the target here in a minute, but the that shot was a little low it's pretty good left and right it's actually just a little bit left that could have been me um but it's it's a little bit low now looking through my reticle when i shot that top dot just right on the bullseye at 30 yards um it being a little low it lines up exactly with the second dot of this particular reticle so you know like i said normally i like to be zero to 30 on that first one but the fact that it's lining up, that 30 yard is lining up exactly with my second dot, I might just keep it that way. So we're gonna shoot a second shot now um, and we're gonna shoot just the same distance and shoot the second dot now at 30 yards and see if that's a bullseye. All right, I pulled these out of the target a little bit because they absolutely buried in there. And unfortunately it looks like I jacked up a fletching here. Uh, but so this is our first shot, okay? This is our first one shooting the top dot at 30 yards after that, you know, our 20 yard first shot sight in. Like I said, it was a little low, a little left. Looks like the left might have been me. So I just shot the second dot because when I was looking through my optics, the second dot lined right up with where this was. So I went ahead, shot a second arrow using the second dot at 30 yards and boom, it's money. So this particular optic, maybe it's kind of set up that way. It's a little different than what I normally do, but that's, I mean, that's totally fine. What I'll probably do is I'm gonna leave it. Um, we're running out of a little bit of daylight here, you guys, you, as you can see, um, it's getting dark, but I think as far as sight in goes, this can be perfect for somebody that's picking up this bow for the first time that's going to maybe hunt with me, um, you know, or as a backup bow. And I'll probably just sharpie something or put a little, like a little label somewhere on the stock that basically says like 120, 230. Hopefully, you know, like the third dot lines up at 40. And honestly, for, for what I want this bow to do, uh, shooting out to 40 yards, that's, that's going to be totally fine. All right, you guys. That's what I got for you tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this helps you. Whether you're changing a setup, whether you're sighting your crossbow in for the first time, if you have something or some help from someone and you wanna try this, being able to lock your crossbow in and make those adjustments physically looking through your reticle and watching your reticle move 
to where your first shot was, you guys are gonna get dialed in really fast. I mean, you guys saw our 20 yard shot after the first one, our second one just to verify was absolutely perfect. So it's just a great way to not sit there and chase arrows and make a bunch of adjustments, have to shoot a bunch of shots just to get sighted in, you know, at 20 yards and then do your, you know, your fine tuning at those longer distances. Like if you can just get dialed in at 20, boom, right off the bat, it makes all that shooting much more enjoyable, much easier. All those fine tune adjustments come in just a lot cleaner. Everything about this process, I really like, and I hope that you guys like it too, and I hope you find it helpful. So if you did find it helpful, please do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll put some links to things like the bog death grip, a lead sled, other things that you could possibly use to help secure your cross if you want to try this method if you don't have them and you want to purchase them check out the description down below i'll have some of those links for you so thank you guys for tuning in i always appreciate it be safe god bless and remember be a sportsman make a sportsman